to segment 24 of my building of the Black Pearl. And I think to be fair to everyone, I've gotten to the point where it's going to be a lot of uh, line work. So I'm possibly going to make this the last segment and then I'll come back with a follow-up. It may be a couple of months because I want to finish the string work, but let me give you a couple hints as to what I'm thinking on that. I am going to follow that book and I think I'll just take it step by step, line by line, but let me show you one thing that I think may help and then update you on what I've completed so far and then hopefully in a couple of months I'll be back and you'll see the completed ship. But I do want to take a moment to thank everyone for watching. This has not been a huge YouTube success. There's about 200 people following along. And you know what? That, that's enough. Um, it lets me know that some of you maybe have bought this ship and had struggled. And maybe this series has helped you along. So let me update you on what I've completed so far. And then in a couple months, I'll be back. I'll show you the completed project. And any last things that I uh, discovered along the way. It'll be a summary of the adventure of my building of the Black Pearl. Again, as always, thanks for watching. As you can imagine, I'm pretty excited about getting to this phase. The ship is starting to look awesome, in my own selfish personal opinion. I have redone the base a little bit. I put some, uh, these are oak dowels that are bigger around and I was able to raise the ship up some so that the nameplate will show better. What I'm in the process of doing now is trying to darken the yeah. statue on the front. I've already done it some, but this is just a black flat spray paint. And I'm just dusting it. I'm trying to just take a little of the uh, gloss out of it. I've already painted it. It started out white. I painted it gold and then I put some oh it's an aqua color to give it a look of uh, being out in the weather like what copper does when it's weathered it turns a greenish so I'm pretty happy with that that's very just a very light dusting now I'll let that dry flip it over and do the other side just a little bit and I turned it over try and do this back side Now I'll let that dry and we'll take a look at it. It's a very subtle difference, but I didn't want it to be bright. These are some of the statuettes that go on the back of the ship, and this is kind of a little King Neptune. But I don't want these to be that uh, strong of a gold. I want them to have some of the same patina that I put on the front angel. And there she is, after I sprayed a little dark... Uh, spray paint on her just to give her some age. I don't want them quite this dark because this is on the front of the ship it would get a lot more splash. These wouldn't get uh, much ocean splash. So what I do is I take a variety of teal or aqua colored paints and just kind of get a blend. So these are just uh, paints I picked up that are a little different color variations. And then I'll take a rather large brush and I'll just kind of play with some of the color. I don't want to get very much. Sometimes I've added um, browns in and green. So let's try a little marsh green. Okay, that's getting more what I want. So it has a little bit of the aqua color. And then I will just dab lightly. And then another brush. And then I want to kind of fan it.
You have to make sure you do that this before it dries. And it kind of gives it a little bit of an aged look. So you can see a little difference on the one on the right. It's not quite as stark. Here they all are after I finished the, the uh, patina look to them just slightly. And it just uh, dulled the gold down just a little bit. And here's the completed angel and dove for the front of the ship. And you can see I've made her look darker and more aged. So I'm very happy with all of those pieces. I've also acquired a variety of extras that will go on the ship, cargo, and I've got different sizes. Here's how they start out, kind of a they're metal. And I do the same technique with different colors of paint to try and make the things look aged. Some I'm not done with yet. You can see there's still some metal showing through, so what I'll do is I'll take different um, subdued paint colors, browns, uh, a little black, I'll add in some of that moss green or some aqua colors. I've got a variety in sizes of barrels at different stages of completion and how I plan on using those is to show depth so far inside the ship under the the uh, top deck I'll put these in the background and then the foreground and then the larger ones this could be like a water barrel so I'm thinking about cutting the top off drilling out the inside and then filling it with a clear acrylic so the thing that I would encourage is just use your imagination, especially when you've got a little freight box. I mean, the rougher the better. See, I don't want this metal showing necessarily, but scuff marks are good, so if it ends up making it look like a scuff mark, I'll leave it. But I'll do some more paint work. I just did the initial coating on that. Same with all these different items. And I don't think you can go wrong because the rougher looking the better. For the shrouds, what I've done is taken the lines and uh, color coded each line because on each side of the ship they'll need to be balanced and tied to the same point so I wanted a reference to know which one was which so you can see the different colors that I've used. Put a little masking tape on it so I can fit it through and I'll show you how I did this. So I need to find the opening here. Feed that through. I need to make sure that I don't tangle up these other lines. I've just temporarily secured these different places. Okay, once you have that up, you can simply spin around and you're going to take it down through the other side. You can do these one at a time, I suppose. Okay, now I need to... I know you're not quite able to see, sorry. I'm just pulling up the excess so I get them about the same. So now you can see I have those balanced. And now those are ready to go. And what I have been doing and I'm going to loop this, as you can see on the front one. I've got a little zip tie I'm going to put on that, and then those will be ready to go. I may want to do some other lines first, so I'm, I'm just going to pause and make sure when I want to start working on them. That should hold those. I'm ready to work on them. I have another book that I've uh, acquired. I've had it for a while, but it's called Ship Modeling Simplified by Frank Mastini, M-A-S-T-I-N-I. And it has a guide that says it's step by step. Now this is a lot more written words, but it may help me in what rigging to do first, second, third, fourth. So that's another reference that I'm using, and that may be helpful to you also. Those of you that have been following along probably remember I had trouble with this part and getting everything to fit correctly. It would go underneath the windows for the captain's
quarters. I gave up trying to use that because I needed something a little thicker. I had some gaps here so you can see I used a piece of this trim. It's the same trim that was up here and that has worked out very well. I may be able to attach this part to the bottom of it. That just gives positioning for the uh, the statues that I'll put on there. So I'll do that shortly. And while I'm talking about the statues, I just finished uh, doing the paint work on the lanterns on the back of the ship. And I did the same technique that I did on the statues, kind of stippled different colors. Speaking of the statues, I did go ahead and dull them down a little bit by using that black spray paint that I had mentioned before. So I put just a light coating and that it's a flat black from quite a ways away, just a little dusting. And I did the same on the Neptune statues on the ship itself. And I don't know if you can... Here's what they look like originally, just black. And then you can see I've uh, used some varying colors to try and give it some aged look to it. I'm pretty happy with that. I will say that I made another mistake. I should not have put them on the ship first. I should have painted them first. But that's come along pretty well. The colors that I used, the typical teals that I was using in the past, those two, kind of aqua color. I did just a very little bit of black, not very much at all, but I did put a little touch of black. I skipped using the brown and I did use some gold. And then I did the same thing I talked about before. I took this dry brush and just kind of powdered it after I applied it with a small brush. So that's the results of the lanterns. Pretty happy with that look. I have the statues in place, both on the rear and the side. There's really only one thing I have left to put in place for this segment, and I saved it for last. Remember I mentioned the water barrel. You can see it in place, and hopefully that kind of looks like water inside it. I have a lot more supplies to put on board the ship. There's a couple of the lifeboats. I have one more to make. And obviously I have a lot of rigging work to do. I think I want to have her slightly tilted up, about like that. And I've decided I'm going to name the Angel Freedom. Here's a nighttime view with all the lanterns on the lower deck. This is from the open side of the ship. And then also a view of the captain's quarters. Up, looking down and through the skylight and should be a view into the captain's quarters kind of hard to see with my camera what's in there I will end up putting a treasure chest inside So this will just about do it for this episode. I'll continue working, so don't give up on me. I'll be back when the work is done on the Black Pearl.